So this last summer, I was with my family on vacation. My sons, 17 and 21 years old, were with all of their cousins from my wife's side of the family. We were getting ready to have a large family meal when, for the sake of conversation, I proposed a puzzle to all of them. Now, to be fair, it's a little more than a puzzle. It's actually a thought experiment called the Ship of Theseus, and it goes like this. You have a boat made entirely of wooden planks. Over time, due to wear and tear, you have to replace those wooden planks. And after a period of time regularly replacing planks, you have replaced all of the wooden planks of the ship. So, is your boat still the same boat? My sons and their cousins jumped in with both feet taking a definitive stand on having the answer to the riddle. And I honestly can't remember who took what side, but some of them argued that the ship was the same ship while others argued that it was an entirely new ship since no part of the original ship existed. Now, puzzles tend to have solutions, but thought experiments don't always have a solution. And my sons and their cousins made the mistake that we all do sometimes, where we take a position quickly and then go about defending it. They found their solution and tried to reveal it before anyone else could, but they didn't all come to the same solution. The cousins all argued amongst themselves for a bit, and that's when I started to feed the arguing. I said, if it's the same ship, what part of it is the same? And at that moment, half of them thought I was on their side. It's not the same ship, they sang out, thinking they were victorious until I asked the follow-up question. So if it's not the same ship, when did it become a different ship? There was silence. I continued, So, with replacement of the first plank, or maybe the second? Or was it when the ship was 51% replaced? That sounded good to some of them, but why 51%? If the ship was only 10% of the original planks, and completely appeared and sailed like the original, couldn't it be argued the ship is the same ship? All of a sudden, they weren't so sure anymore. Maybe it was the same ship. And so it went. Each time a side thought they had the better argument, I would challenge them and make them question their position. Some of them changed sides a few times during the discussion. Ultimately, most of them realized what very smart thinkers like Heraclitus and Plato have concluded over the last 2,500 years of contemplating this. There is no clear answer. One of my favorite movies, The Yakuza from 1974, presents the same concept in a little bit of a different way when... A character says, The water is always changing, but the river remains the same. What he's saying is, No person can ever step into the same water, but we think of it as the same river. Now, whether it's a Japanese gangster antihero or the ship of Theseus, it's an idea that challenges the concept of identity. What defines who we are? Who we think we are? who others think we are, or maybe who an organization is, an organization, say, like a fire department. The department that Shane and I work for has been a department since 1937. Eighty-four years ago, it took a name and began protecting citizens. We claim that heritage, but none of our original members are still employed. Those planks of that boat have been replaced. As a matter of fact, no one in the department has more than 27 years with the department. So, those planks were replaced recently, relatively speaking. We have some operational stations that are over 50 years old, but none of our original stations are in service. Those planks have been replaced. None of the original apparatus. Those planks, too. So, are Shane and I a member of the same department that was started in 1937? Obviously, if we were just to look at the technological advances in nozzles, we would argue that we're not the same department as we were in 37. But at the same time, just like Theseus's ship, we argue, as a matter of fact, we take pride in the continuity of our department and celebrate that it is the same department with all of its heritage and its legacies. The comparison raises some interesting questions about each of our roles in our departments. Many of us join a department to join that organization. We want to become part of it and identify ourselves with it. 
We wear the uniform proudly while on duty, tell people at parties who we work for, and wear our company t-shirts off-duty to let strangers know what organization we're part of. Some of us are even legacy firefighters with a father or mother or both who were in the department. We want to be connected with what the department is. We want to sail that boat. But almost without fail, at some point after becoming a part of an organization, each of us wish it was different in some way. We see things about it we don't like, things we would change. Planks of wood in our organizational boat that we would say need to be replaced. Maybe it's an old apparatus, or maybe a firefighter past his or her prime who just needs to retire, or maybe even someone who needs to be fired. Maybe it's a procedure, or a tactic, or a policy we think needs to change. It's almost as if the more time you spend in the boat, the more you start to realize it needs some work done on it. So, is it wrong to want to change the department you joined? I mean, you chose to join it as it was. And then, not everybody is going to be happy about the changes you want to make. Now, to continue our metaphor, there's something to be said for the method that the planks get changed out with. As we change out a single plank, we could actually damage the planks around it. It's not what we intended, but it happens nonetheless. Or maybe when you pull that plank off to replace it, you see rot underneath that was hidden. So, more planks to replace. We also are not typically the only ones in our department changing out planks and making changes to the boat. Others also see planks that need to be replaced. Some of them may start to not just replace planks, but start to change the structure of the boat, at least from your perspective. And you may get to a point in your career where you no longer recognize the boat anymore. Or, what happens when someone comes behind you and changes a plank you already changed? Now what? So, there's no answer to this dilemma, just like the ship of Theseus. We can't keep our departments the way they were and at the same time expect them to survive until tomorrow. And just like the river... Our department's water is constantly changing, but our river remains the same. My sons and their cousins enjoyed that discussion for a while. It was fun for all of them, for a bit. But then an interesting thing happened. Some of them seemed to enjoy the realization that there isn't a clear answer. It left them happy. But some of them seemed a bit frustrated by the fact that this puzzle has no clear solution. The irony that was missed by all of them as I looked on was the fact that they all, aging from 12 years old to their early 20s, are at a time in their lives where they are constantly replacing their own planks, discovering what their identity is. Me? I continued to see them as the same boat they have always been. I enjoy seeing their planks get changed out. So, are you someone who enjoys the dilemma? I think that may be at the core of whether or not you're happy in your department. We say it all the time. The two things firefighters hate are change and the way things are. I think the secret to enjoying your time in the fire service is to come to terms with that dilemma, that those two things can and should exist at the same time. The idea that Theseus's ship is the same ship and a completely different ship. At the end of my time with my department, I'm going to want to see myself as part of an organization that has been around for a long time before me. So, whether you're someone who bemoans the fact that planks in our boats, our departments, have to be changed out periodically, or whether you're someone glad to see the boat renewed continuously and kept seaworthy and ready for sailing tomorrow, or whether you're someone who enjoys both, just remember, keep being someone willing to pull on an oar. Combustible is available on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, Amazon, and everywhere else you listen to podcasts. Subscribe to Combustible to make sure you don't miss out on an episode. Follow us on Facebook so we know how many of you listeners there are out there. And you can check us out online at combustiblethepodcast.com. As always, we would like to thank the Golden Dogs and True North Records 
for letting us use their song Saints at the Gates for our theme music. You can find the Golden Dogs music on any streaming platform. Thanks for listening, and we'll catch you later.